Uh, my name is Michelle Bufader. I'm the PI and uh, Dr. Shaolong Leo Gang uh, is co-PI. Uh, we collaborated uh, with various researchers in the nation. Uh, you can see the list here at uh, Princeton, Duke, Rutgers, Hopkins, University of Pittsburgh and the University of Cincinnati. Uh, the first part of the talk is, is going to uh, focus on the um, number of cases in the U.S. So we obtain these data from uh, Johns Hopkins University and, uh, you know, and they provided them daily. And then so we, we analyzed the spatial distribution of the number of cases. And then you can see here in March 2020 and then in May. Uh, and then like, if you zoom in on a certain uh, region, let's say this is the Washington, D.C. area, we notice that the number of observed cases, you know, they are spiky. So you have like the high number, maybe this is this is DC or Baltimore, and then you move, and then there's nothing in between due to the smaller population, and then you have a higher number. So for us, that that's reminiscent of what's observed in you know in turbulence. And then so we we thought, okay, that the number of cases would be something known as multifractal. And uh, so we, we, you know, we, we, we got to investigate that. So the conclusion is that the number of COVID-19 cases is what you call scaling and then, but it's not totally random. It is, it is correlated. And uh, we analyze the correlation using what you call the Fourier spectrum. So first, because it is scaling. So the, you can find a direct relation between what's happening at 10 kilometer, kilometers up to 2,600 kilometers. So initially, during the, the early phase of the disease, the correlation was small, you know, as you can, as one could deduce from the slope. As the slope gets, you know, uh, steeper, then it means the correlation increases. And then we notice that the, co the spatial correlation of the disease converged towards the correlation, the spatial correlation of the population. Uh, and these are other multifactor properties that, uh, you know, they are in the paper, I'm not gonna discuss them now. And then for our investigation, we used a relatively simple model developed, you know, more than 120 years ago. It is called SIR model, susceptible. These are the people could be infected, the infected ones, infectious, and then removed. Uh, these could be removed due to the recover or by death. So we, uh, we use this model to try to, to capture what is happening and you know, if you recall that spectral slope uh, figure, this is here shown as a time series using also our model, which is the, the line. And then one could note that we were able to reproduce the spatial correlation using that, that model. Uh, this is just an illustration of how our model functions. So we start with a population that is multifractal, and then we assign uh, you know, the model uh, for infection. And then you can see these, these are the number of new cases, of course, with time, the number of new cases with the subsides. The conclusion of this is that, uh, you know, the first thing was uh, the major finding for us was the population, the spatial distribution of population is multifractal. So which allows us to explain why the, the COVID-19 spatial distribution is multifractal. Uh, you know, there are major work where they use big data to, to model the spread of the disease using number of people, using their phones. So our, our approach, you know, provides a compromise between their big approach, the big data approach, and, you know, fitting models at, in, at small towns, say, at the scale, say, of Newark. And there's always issues of privacy using big data. Uh, and the other, you know, again, this is maybe pure modeling, but we believe that paying attention to spatial correlation would constrain the model so it doesn't go wild. The next part of my talk is about the movement of, uh, vi you know, viron or, you know, it's called them particles in the supermarket. Imagine this is a supermarket that is 40 meter long, you know, 20, 25 meter wide. And then you have the, the doors here, the red you know, arrows, these are the, 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 where the air comes from, vents, and then the, the white arrows are the return vents. This is hypothetical. And uh, so we use CFD simulation, the color trends, to, to model the movement of air in the supermarket. And I want to show here the results. Our focus was on the attachment of the particles. There are a lot of studies they, they deal with the transport. 
But for us, we say, okay, you know, what happened, you know, because we do know that the part, you know, the virus or the, the, the particles, they do attach to surfaces. So here you can see them attaching to the ceiling, the orange, they attach to shelves, you know, blue attach on the floor, uh, which is yellow. Whereas if you don't allow for attachment, you know, even after 20 minutes, you see them spread all over the place. So therefore the attachment on surfaces is important when you, when you wanna predict the indoor transport of viruses. Uh, this is, this is uh, one, one curve here where you have one graph, you have the concentration at five meter from a source, the source. This is without attachment of five micron droplets. So it is 20% the strength of the source. Uh, with 25% attachment, you can see this is like maybe 12%. And then with 100% attachment is like 10%. So we conclude that um, the attachment doesn't play a role, which means the type of surfaces in the supermarket is not gonna be, it's not gonna play a major role because there were discussions like, oh, should we use, uh, you know, metal or glass or plastic? We, based on these simulations, it seems it doesn't make a big difference. Um, one thing we investigated is also, you know, when they said, okay, there's one way in the supermarket so people could walk one way, one way aisles. And then we said, okay, well, one of the things that you could reduce, you know, the, the number of air particles, the virus particles in the air is maybe you can create baffles. This is as an environmental engineer, we, we're used to using uh, to this concept for plug flow reactors. And then we conclude that if you place these baffles in the system, you are going to reduce the concentration of particles in the air. And, uh, and the other thing that uh, from the study is that the narrower the aisles, the better the air quality which is kind of counterintuitive because every, you know, whenever you look at supermarket, you know, you look at large aisles and then it gives you the feeling that it is healthier. Thank you.